Our first question is very short, but it's a good question. Jesse asks, to keep up with strength, what type of eating would be most appropriate? And boy, I tell you, Jesse, if you want to upset people, I mean, you know, the other day I, 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 I poked fun at a political uh, figure, which I always think is okay. I think, I think it's okay to pick fun of political figures. I think it's fun to, uh, I mean, you know, anybody who's in power needs to be tweaked. I think that's the job of a comedian. And they got all offended. When I was growing up, talking about religion and politics was something you never would talk about at a party. And now, of course, you it's probably sports would be included in there too. You just have to be careful. It's a, it's a, those are all landmines uh, for conversations. But I'm going to add this. I'm going to say uh, eating. <laughs> Boy, you can upset people when you talk about something as simple as style of eating, what Jesse asks. So the thing is, Jesse, Olympic Training Center 1984, the, the nutritionist walked out and said, I don't know what the big deal is. More, more protein, more veggies, and drink water. Uh, years later, Rob Wolf told me, I don't know what the issue is. More fiber, more fiber, more fish oil, more protein. Uh, I thought that those two sentences, those two little paragraphs are about all you ever need to know. Um, for strength, though, people can get freakishly strong uh, with the worst possible diets in the world. Um, there's probably, you know, when you talk to the great power lifters, one of the things they usually talk about as much as their, their chains, their bands, their, you know, their compression, their this, their that is what's for breakfast. I mean, these guys can eat and it's, it's amazing to watch. Um, if you're an, a super heavyweight, an unlimited lifter, a strong person, um, diet, this <laughs> diet is shoveling everything you possibly can down your gullet. Uh, I, I, but there's the other side of it. You know, I always break things up into basically five categories, okay? Health, which is the optimal interplay of the human organs. And for your health, you probably need to drink water. Uh, you need protein. You need fats. You need carbohydrates. Uh, the sources uh, should be <clears throat> comfortable for you to consume. Uh, like in my case, I'm allergic to uh, lobster and crab. And so those are not things that I would gain weight on. I would basically get choked down on. Um, some of you might have religious issues or food intolerances and food allergies and flat out, you know, uh, Im uh, immune system issues that don't allow you to eat certain foods. Some of you might be from an, uh, an area that specializes in certain foods and um, those would probably be the best things you could ever have. I remember Dr. Jarvis always talking about how you should uh, focus on what he called your human house. Uh, eat what your ancestors ate, which there's some wisdom there. Um, if you're, you know, if you're a Viking stock, I mean, you're probably going to get away with some fish and seafood uh, as a pretty good idea because that's what you ate and uh, supplement it with, uh, when I'm always in Sweden and Norway, I'm always interested in the different berries that they eat and the different breakfasts they eat because they have uh, vegetables, fruits, and foods that are different than what we can grow here where I live. Uh, I have a, a beehive uh, right here, and I'm going to be eating um, <laughs> locally grown honey this year. Uh, I, I grow my own little, uh, oh, well, to say I actually, I, I would never survive on the food I grow. But, you know, I, may, I have my own tomatoes. I have my own mint. I have my own herb garden. Uh, this year I'll have corn, uh, black beans, and squash. They're called the Three Sisters. If I'm eating things that are coming out of my garden, they 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 tend to be better for me. As a kid, I could I always struggle with oranges, tomatoes. I get these little things here. Okay, so uh, because the the acidicness of those things were just too hard for my my lips. Okay, so after all, oh, so and then there's religious things you probably can't eat. So. After all those caveats, uh, for strength, uh, I still think that you need protein. Now, I think we overdid protein for a whole bunch of my career, but I still would say that protein is a pillar and then you really need to make sure you have it. Uh, essential fats are often overlooked. Um, of course, I've, I've been a fan of fish oil since I, since the 1980s when I, 
um, when I first first read Phil Maffey Tone's book, when I was reading some of these other people, I don't know if the book's even around anymore, but uh, um, these were books that really pushed fish oil, and I've always found that for me, uh, the seafood, anything from the sea, outside of crab and lobster, seemed to really uh, do well with my body. Uh, when I eat foods from the sea, I, I pick up my fish oils and I pick up my protein. Uh, from there, there's that whole world of carbohydrates, and I would I would always push people into um, more vegetables and more fermented foods. Uh, here as an American, you're going to get grain. Grain's in everything, and you're going to get corn. Corn's in everything. You're going to get soy. Soy's in everything. Eh, you know, I could run on that a little too long, but I think I think it comes down to this. I, I can't recommend in toto simply just eating anything that comes along because it's so difficult on your health. So health is the optimal interplay of the human organs, okay? So to be healthy, um, you, you should have foods that are probably diverse, probably fiber of some kind in it, inappropriate uh, in the fat and protein family. You can, where you go with carbohydrates is going to be on a number of other things. So for fitness, now fitness uh, is the ability to do a task. Um, I, I always think that Dr. Sheehan's great insight is the only thing that matters for a, an appropriate diet, uh, diet is a bowel movement before you run. And I always thought that was kind of funny. Um, <laughs> So for fitness, you know, whatever, you know, if a food gets in your way, like, for example, like last summer I was a, at in England at an Olympic lifting meet and I I had a great case of diarrhea. Well, the diarrhea in, impacted my Olympic lifting. So whatever I ate, don't eat. Uh, for longevity, uh, you know, it's still a bit of a mixed bag about what works. Uh, it does seem that the, uh, the over-the-counter drug here in the United States, well, not over-the-counter, I apologize, uh, it's a very commonly prescribed uh, thing called metformin or glucophage, which comes from the French lilac bush. It's been around well over 100 years. Seems to have an impact on longevity. So there is a pill. Walking seems to help with longevity. Uh, being connected to other humans seems to help with longevity. Um, whether red wine, coffee, dark chocolate, uh, fermented foods help with longevity is still kind of a, well, we'll see. For performance, uh, performance is uh, back to fitness. You know, uh, Dr. Sheehan's advice is actually really uh, more valuable than you think. If you ever want to find out the importance of, of why I talk about bowel movements so much, get constipated at a really important event and then get back to me about the importance of this kind of thing. But performance, you don't want to be, you don't want your food to get in the way. And that's kind of its job. And then the fifth one, of course, is body composition or how you look you know, in the mirror, on the beach, or naked. And that, I would still, I, I read this week that an article said that you, intermittent fasting is, isn't necessary, but uh, the, one of the reasons I'm a fan of intermittent fasting, a lot of the people who I look up to in the, in the industry, in body composition, recommend, uh, it's funny, it, it seems to swirl around a couple ideas. Uh, intermittent fasting shows up all the time. Walking shows up a lot in body composition. Um, appropriate weight training shows up. And that I, I, and I'm using the word appropriate for a good reason there. Because appropriate weight training isn't beating yourself to death. Because if you work too hard, and this comes out right out of the work of, uh, you know, someone I have great respect for, uh, Clarence Bass. You know, uh, Clarence Bass, if you work too hard, you start losing muscle, not fat. Yeah, you'll lose 20 pounds, but it might be 16 pounds of muscle and four pounds of fat, which is not what you want to do. But for strength, and because strength is such a long-term commitment to get stronger, I think you should make sure you eat a diet, that uh, a type of eating, a style of eating, that you can do over and over and over. And is going to be an N equals 1 experience of one kind of thing. If a certain food, uh, a guy like me is telling you, eat this, eat this, eat this, and it makes you sick to your stomach, well, don't eat it. And if a certain food, and, you know, I'm a big fan of of, of exploring food by, like, eating a food. Uh, that's one of the great insights Phil Maffetone's two-week uh, Maffetone diet 
where he limits you down to certain foods and then you add logically one food back over a period. Um, basically, for those of you who have ever done the two-week Maffetone trial, it's, well, it's, it's basically what Rob Wolf would have told you. It's what you read in the book, uh, Lights Out. It's, you know, basically you, for two weeks, you're eating uh, vegetables, uh, fruits. There are some fruit restrictions, I think. And then really uh, the, 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 the meats and fowl and things like that are as close to you can. So you don't eat salami. In fact, I'm not sure you eat pork products, but, you know, you eat, uh, you eat salmon, not salami. I mean, wow, what a, what a shock. And I, you might want to look into the work of Maffey Tone on that. His website has it. Of course, it's also in the book uh, Natural Born Heroes uh, uh, by the guy who wrote the book about barefoot running, uh, McDougal, I think it is. I think there's value to doing something like the two-week. Uh, you could also get the same insights from the Atkins diet, but Maffey Tone uh, argues that you add this food this week, and you, you, you see how it impacts you. Then you add another food. Then you add another food. If it's, if it's a positive impact, you keep it. If it's negative, bye-bye for a while. And I think that's the way we should do it in the strength work. Okay? Do the Maffey Tone test or something similar. See what hurts and helps when you eat it, and then just do your best to uh, take care of your nutritional needs with foods that agree with you. Thank you.